my mark. Three, two, one, mark. T minus nine minutes and counting. And we are at T minus nine minutes and counting, and the ground launch sequencer has been initiated. NASA test director Doug Lyons is about to call for the transmittal of stored pre-launch commands as Discovery is only nine minutes away from launch on the last of a series of nine missions to Mir. On this flight, we will retrieve astronaut Andy Thomas, who has been in space now for the past four months. PLT, OTC. PLT, go ahead. Configure fuel cell essential bus for switches. PLT, copies. T minus eight minutes and counting. Pilot Dom Gorey is now flipping switches in the cockpit to directly connect the three fuel cells. PLT, we've connected the essential buses to the fuel cells. Copy. Coming up in about 15 or 20 seconds, the orbiter access arm will be retracted away from the vehicle. TLS is go for OAA retract. And the access arm is being retracted away from the vehicle at this time. This is the walkway used by the crew to gain entry into and out of the vehicle, and it can be returned to position within seconds if necessary. PSOTC. The PRPS. Do the start APU strip chart recorders. Copy. Okay. APU strip charts are running. PLTOTC. Go ahead for the PLT. Perform APU pre start. PLT copy. And the orbiter test conductor has given pilot Dom Gorey the go-ahead to perform the auxiliary power unit pre-start procedure. We are at T-minus six minutes and counting. OTC PLT, the APU pre-start is complete. We've got three gray top necks. OTC copies. And Dom um, Gorey reports that the pre-start of the APU is complete. NTD, CTSS, OAA is go for launch. And CTSS, NTD, I copy. Very good news. Thank you. T-minus, five minutes and counting. TLS is go for orbiter APU start. And we have a go for APU start. TLT, perform APU start. TLT, copies. CDR OTC, reconfigure heaters. Heater reconfigure and work. The solid rocket booster and external tank safe and arm devices are being armed at this time. And the main fuel valve heaters on the three shuttle main engines are being turned on in preparation for our launch this afternoon. This mission carries a crew of six who will spend the next ten days in space, four of those days docked with the Mir space station. OTC, PLT, the APU start is complete. We've got three good APUs. OTC copies. 
And OTC, CDI here, reconfigure is complete. OTC copies. T minus four minutes and counting. PLS scope or purge sequence four. At this time, a final test of the flight control surfaces will be conducted. This is a programmed pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and other flight control surfaces. And the final error surface checks of the orbiter's engines are being conducted at this time. All is continuing to go well for today's launch as NASA prepares for one final visit to Russia's Mir space station. T-minus three minutes and counting. Dope, ET, LOT, TLC, OTC, clear caution warning memory, verify no unexpected errors. PLT copy. Standing by for the gaseous oxygen vent hood to be retracted away from the top of the external tank. That is occurring at this time. Everything looks good and we are cleared for launch today. No problems are being reported from the vehicle or from the crew. Flight crew OTC, close and lock your visors, initiate O2 flow, have a smooth ride up the hill and bring Andy back to us. Roger that, we copy visors in O2 and uh, we'd just like to on behalf of the crew and uh, the uh, cosmonauts on board the Mir to just say thanks to the team that's put this flight together, especially supporting the Phase 1 program. And as we head up hill into space, we aim to make it proud and bring a, a good friend Andy home. All systems are go. Discovery is about 90 seconds from beginning NASA's ninth mission to dock with Russia's space station Mir. One minute, 30 seconds. T-minus one minute, 15 seconds, and the liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is reported to be at the proper flight pressures. T-minus one minute and counting. We're transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Discovery is now running off of its three onboard fuel cells. In the next 10 seconds, we will come up for a go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. T-minus 20 seconds and counting. T-minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery as NASA embarks on the final mission to dock with Russia's space station Mir. Discovery. Houston now controlling. Correct. Fire Houston. complete discovery now in the heads down wings level position headed to a 213 nautical mile high orbit inclined 51.6 degrees to either side of the equator. Discovery's engine is now throttling down to 67% of rated thrust as the orbiter passes through the area of maximum aerodynamic pressure on the vehicle in the lower part of the atmosphere.
three inches now, throttling back up. Discovery, go at throttle up. Go at throttle up. Discovery's three liquid fuel engines are now back at full throttle, 104% of rated thrust. Altitude now 12 and a half miles, downrange distance 8 miles. One minute, 30 seconds into the flight, with more than two and a quarter million pounds of propellant having already been used, Discovery now weighs half of what it did at liftoff. Standing by for the next major event, which will be the burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters, a little more than two minutes into flight. Booster officer confirms good separation of the solid rocket boosters. Discovery, your performance is nominal. Nominal performance. Two and a half minutes into flight, Discovery's performance has Discovery, been as expected. Two engine tail. Two engine tail, thank you. In the event of a single engine failure, Discovery could now reach one of the transatlantic landing sites. Telemetry indicates all three engines still continue to perform well. Altitude now 41 miles, downrange distance 56 miles.